Hello YouTube, what's up and welcome to this amazing new video. Today I've got something very special for you because I built this motion control system for any ordinary DSLR or mirrorless camera. And it allows you to take very smooth videos or time lapses with some motion inside. So without any further ado, let me show you how I built this. Before we start, I actually want to show you a time lapse I did with this device because I think it's so gorgeous. And here you can see the beautiful city of Stuttgart in a time lapse that has been shot over a period of over 30 minutes and with 400 pictures. But for now, let's continue on the build process and, well, yeah, I will just disassemble the machine and explain any part. I designed the whole motion control system to be as modular as possible so it can be disassembled and assembled at any given time. So if I want to change something in the future for example I can easily do that. And after unscrewing the base plate here you can have a clear look at all the electronic components I built into the device and also the stepper motor. On the top we've got a quick release plate and yeah. The base plate has a standard quarter inch tripod mount on the bottom which is made out of metal so that everything stays safe and you can mount this device to any ordinary tripod. Of course the upper part with the quick release plate can also be unscrewed very easily and therefore this reveals a closer look onto the infrared LED that's hidden underneath it. This infrared LED is used as a remote to trigger the camera at any given time, for example for time lapses when you want to take a photo. And because infrared light is not visible to the human eye, here you can see it as a camera would see it through its sensor. But for now let's continue with the interesting part, the electronics. Well, as you may have already noticed, I built an Arduino Nano into this project and as well a stepper motor driver which is in fact a DRV8825 and of course also a 2.4 GHz wireless transmitter. And this transmitter is used to communicate with any future projects, for example a motorized camera slider that I will do in my next video so that I can control everything from one place. And the stepper motor used in this project is a NEMA 17 that is connected over a belt drive to this upper part that is also turning the camera. And after unscrewing this you can have a closer look onto this pink gear underneath it. And it sits in this massive ball bearing and is very smooth to turn. But let's take it out because it has a little secret inside which is in fact this 3.5mm audio jack that I glued into the pink gear. And after connecting and soldering everything together, then it is possible to use a standard headphone jack to connect to this pink gear. And what this does is a very clever idea that bypasses the need of a slip ring because I got an electrical contact between the stationary part and the rotating part. And this bypasses the need of a wire that goes through everything because the bad thing with a wire is that, for example, after a few turns this wire is going to break. And with this method you can turn on the device forever and nothing is ever going to break. And an electrical contact is guaranteed at any given time. And that is very cool, I think. And the ball bearing is also absolutely gorgeous because it is so smooth and so massive and it also has very little tolerance and it is held in to the 3D printed part only by hammering it in and yeah just hold it in by tension but this works perfectly till today and it runs so smooth I just cannot stop talking about this oh my god it's so smooth The NEMA 17 stepper motor I used in this project is held in by three screws and drives the pink gear using a GD2 timing belt and as well as a small ball bearing that is tightening the belt a little bit. And here you can see the LCD display that I hot glued in the 3D printed enclosure so that everything stays safe and it also has an ice bird C shield on the back to make things easier. 
and the rotary encoder used in this project can easily be used to determine what program you want to run or what value a variable should have for example. But now let's have a look at the most interesting part of this project I think which is the remote control because this was a standard wired Wii controller that I got online for very cheap. But I made it wireless because with wired controllers you always got the problem of maybe shaking the camera a little bit or something like that and I wanted to make the whole system as perfect as possible and this is why I built in a small lithium ion battery including a charging circuit and the 2.4 GHz transmitter circuit. And this circuit is actually communicating with the main PCB of the device and it has a small receiver which is in fact this one right here and it works over a distance of 2 to 3 meters. But now let's talk about power. Well, because my device needs 7.5 volts and a USB power bank can only output 5, I built a small step up cable so I can use it with a standard 5 volt power bank. And of course, and with every project that I do, I designed the whole device beforehand in CHD. And this makes the whole process a lot easier, believe me, because it turned out afterwards that I made some mistakes and those mistakes would have been much bigger if I didn't design it beforehand. And of course, this is also obligatory if you want to 3D print all those things, and which I actually did. So I had to design them first. And the biggest problem was to get the belt drive to work because I wasn't quite sure about the number of teeth I had to use and my calculations were wrong and this took a lot of trial and error to get it work properly in the end. But it turned out perfectly and I started to print every part of this device on my Cetus 3D printer which turned out flawlessly. I mean I love this printer, it's so perfect. And after some prototyping tests and some coding and all this stuff, I got the device to work and it works so perfectly. But I think we've had enough of the technical part for now, so let's get our hands dirty and get outside and try it all out. Okay, so first I want to start with this little power bank holder because I think it's perfectly fitting this purpose. Because if you are outside and you want to shoot a time lapse for some hours and you are somewhere in the woods, then you need power and this device holds your power bank perfectly on your tripod. And another cool thing I really like about my motion control system is the built-in quick release plate that can be fitted onto any camera body using a tripod screw and therefore making it very easily to like change your cameras or to get the camera out of the device and shoot some photos. So let's put it in and have a look at a sample footage. So here I use the slow video turning mode. This is manually controlled by the wireless remote control in my hand and I think this looks so perfect. As you can see here the rotation is very smooth because all in all I can drive one rotation in 24,000 individual steps because of the stepper driver I used and the stepper motor and the transmission with the belt and that is such an enormous number I mean 24,000 steps you can't even see one single step and this is such an enormous number I mean I cannot really imagine that but the cool thing is the footages are very smooth and the whole device is working perfectly if you're working in bright sunlight, then I need this IR remote shield to reflect the light coming from the infrared LED because the camera won't see it then. Now let's have a look at the time-lapse function. Well, you can easily control every aspect of this time-lapse. For example, how many pictures you want to take or how many frames per second you want or like how long the time-lapse should take and how many degrees the camera should turn and I mean you can control every individual aspect. And for example in this one I perfectly match the speed of the camera with the speed of the clouds and I think this looks so gorgeous. But to be honest the one that I like the most is the one that you saw in the beginning of this video which is the beautiful city of Stuttgart and its trains.
And with that said, it's finally time to end this video. I thank you so much for watching and if you like this video then please share and subscribe and have a good time. Goodbye.